Yes. <laughs> Um, let me just ask the guys here in San Francisco. Um, Carla, are you ready to go anytime? Okay. Oh, good. Okay, then we'll just we'll leap in. And um, you know, Wendy, we're gonna. I have to ask you some naive questions just so you, you can answer them. Go for it. Um, and you are U.S. You're volcano, volcanologist with the U.S. Geological Survey. That is correct. Okay. Um, we're here with the Wendy Stovall, is that right, Wendy? Wendy Stovall? Yes, Stovall. Stovall, okay. We're here with Wendy Stovall with the USGS, a volcanologist. And Wendy, was this, when you first heard about this, an undersea volcano triggering a tsunami warning, a tsunami advisory on the West Coast, was the eruption and the subsequent tsunami advisory a surprise? Certainly was. Uh, the tsunami advisory was certainly a surprise, mm -hmm. but the eruption, not necessarily. Uh, this volcano specifically had been erupt erupting since December. So it wasn't it wasn't a huge surprise that that happened. But this is the first time in my career that I have heard a tsunami warning occurring as a result of a volcanic eruption. It's the first time in my career, too. I mean, I know there's offshore landslides and I know there are under undersea volcanoes, but the idea of one triggering a tsunami is new to me. Um, yeah. So how often would something like this happen and how often would it be a threat to the West Coast? Well, the, fortunately, uh, the volcano itself is relatively shallow. So the amount of water mm. that was likely displaced during the eruption was not a huge amount. Um, it is surprising that it reached the West Coast. Um, the, the simple... Uh, physics of it are, are really unlikely for anything like that to happen. But yes, it did reach the West Coast. The eruption was very powerful. There are reports that it was heard as far as Alaska. Wow. Um, there were sensors that picked it up around the world. Um, not just seismic sensors, but sensors that measure sound that is inaudible to the human ear, infrasound. So it sent pressure waves, sent pressure yeah. waves in the atmosphere around the globe. That's right. That's exactly right. Wow, that is extraordinary. My question next is, if this island building eruption uh, produced a tsunami that we felt on the West Coast, and this is you know now, have, now going on 24 hours ago, do we have to monitor this? Could it happen again from the same source? Yeah, it could certainly happen again from the same source. We've been kind of having background talks about that internally. And the eruption, since it was ongoing since, it, since December, um, and it's getting larger now. Um, the, there was an eruption just two days ago, and then there was another one that occurred yesterday, as you know, the one that created the tsunami. Mm -hmm. And it's uh, sometimes volcanoes ramp up and they, they just are showing uh, that they can produce more powerful eruptions. So it's possible that this could happen again. Um, fortunately, it's far enough away that tsunami warnings can be issued quickly. Uh, yeah. Right. Yeah. If you are, though, in the kingdom of Tonga, which has pretty much been cut off, their internet yeah. service was cut off a few hours after the, uh, the eruption. Uh, for those folks who are nearby, um, are there real concerns that if the eruptions become more powerful, the 100,000 people living on the island are at terrific risk tonight? Yeah, that is very true. And we, uh, our, our associates that are in contact with the Volcano Monitoring Agency in New Zealand that has been working with them um, say that there's not a whole lot of information out of Tonga currently because of the communications being cut off. But yes, the hazards are real, um, certainly ash hazards, and then again, a tsunami hazard if it were to occur again. But they are experiencing ash hazards already. Right, the ash hazard. Is there anything like with, I guess, sulfur dioxide coming out of this, mixing with the water? Is there an acid rain threat? Uh, acid rain is totally possible too. Um, that is something that they would need to be concerned with. There's water catchment systems on the island. So sulfur dioxide contaminates water catchment systems, which is the way that people get fresh water for their household uh, use. So I know that there has been uh, there has been a recommendation to turn off the catchment system so people aren't contaminating the water that they already have. You're talking about back in Tonga. In Tonga, yeah. yes, in Tonga. Okay, yeah. because <clears throat> we have no idea what's going on on the island kingdom of Tonga tonight, but it's safe to say that it's certainly got folks' attention there. Uh, some of their systems may be down, their monitoring equipment may be down. Are we doing anything, the U.S. Geological Survey, 
to monitor the seismic aspect of what's happening with the volcano to see if an even larger eruption might be imminent? Well, the USGS specifically isn't um, doing anything uh, with this type, with this eruption in Tonga. Um, there are no ground-based monitoring instruments on the volcano at all. So all the all that we have to rely on are satellite imagery, um, and then the infrasound. If there was another eruption, it would be detected again all over the world, similar to the way that it just was with the pressure wave. Um, but certainly, uh, the Tonga Geological Service is in contact with. Um, the GNS in New Zealand, which is the volcano monitoring service there, and they are helping and providing advice and guidance to them. So they they are really the ones that are that are helping them with the volcano monitoring aspect of this. Okay. If there is another bigger eruption that could send a tsunami that threatens the whole West Coast, it'll happen, the eruption will happen without warning then it sounds like. That is right. Yep. Exactly. So we Eruptions have to just occur without warning. monitor it. Okay. Yeah, we just have to, we'll know when it happens, basically. We won't know before it happens. Let me just, uh, because I have you there, and there's my, this is the favorite interview I've done in a year. When I talk to a volcanologist, <laughs> it's like, let me do it all night. Um, I can't, <laughs> but, but let me just ask you quickly, and again, it's a naive question. Are there undersea volcanoes we have to worry about that are off the immediate west coast? There are not really any undersea volcanoes off the West Coast. Um, the, the one that would impact the United States uh, would be the volcano. There's one off the coast of Hawaii. Um, but, but there are none off the coast of the United States. Uh, there are some off the coast of Canada. Uh, so it's possible uh, up there. I can't remember what the name of the volcano is. There is one that's, that's up there, though. Okay, but nothing that's lying off Half Moon Bay. No, no not at all. <laughs> our threats, our volcanic threats are on land, and we do have, we do yes. have active volcanoes in California on land. That is correct, yeah. There are many active volcanoes up and down the whole state of California. Um, the furthest north one is Mount Shasta. The furthest south one is Salton Buttes. Um, and, and we monitor those. The U.S. Geological Survey does monitor all mm -hmm. of those vo volcanoes. Um, the nearest one to the Bay Area is um, up where the geysers is um, at Clear Lake Volcanic Field. That's an old one. It's, it's still active, though. Yeah. It's a considered a dormant volcano. There's still, we know there's still magma underneath there, and we do monitor it very regularly, and there's a new... Um, there's kind of a reinvigorated study to learn more about the system as well up there. Volcanoes, earthquakes, well, tsunamis. Yeah. We get it all in California. California has it all. The greatest, <laughs> the greatest volcanic risk, though, from any volcano in California is? It would be Mount Shasta. Really? I thought you were going to yeah. say Mammoth. No, Mount Shasta... Uh, Mount Shasta has snow and ice on it all year round, so that would create, if there was, were an eruption, then it would be tsunami, or sorry, not tsunamis, lahars, so uh, kind of mud slurries that come down off the top of the volcano would be a big concern for people that live around there. And would we get warning if Mount Shasta were to go? Absolutely, yeah. The volcano itself is monitored pretty well. Uh, and the California Volcano Observatory is responsible for issuing warnings related to all activity of volcanoes in the state of California. And people can get those alerts and notifications sent to their email through our volcano notification service. You can look that up on uh, any web browser that you'd like. And you can subscribe to get any type of update. There are weekly updates that are sent out about all California volcanoes. All right. In the meantime, regarding the volcanic activity off of Tonga and its effect, its potential effect on the West Coast and the potential for a bigger eruption from that same undersea volcano, it's just a matter of watching and waiting. That is correct, yeah. We will we'll see how it progresses. Wendy Stovall with the U.S. Geological Survey of Volcanologists. Wendy, I know how busy you are and you've been doing this all day. Thank you so much. You're very welcome. Have a wonderful night. Hang on a second. Darren yeah. has a question. And forgive okay. me if you've already asked me this and you talked about it. Yeah, go ahead. I can't get clarification on whether or not the energy for this tsunami is primarily driven from underwater displacement mm -hmm. or if it's from the atmospheric gravity waves. No one's safe. The tsunami that was generated, although I think I know what 
I think I know what you're going to say. The energy that was generated that resulted in the tsunami, it was the origin of that undersea, the, the, triggered, the tsunami that was triggered, or was it atmospheric, the gravity wave of the atmosphere being displaced? It was, um, it was in the water itself. We aren't quite sure exactly what it was that caused the tsunami. It could have been um, essentially very rapid boiling, like turning the water from a liquid into a steam. So like rapid boiling and expansion of the water itself. Or there could have been a submarine landslide or a submarine um, like land displacement that occurred as the eruption progressed. Uh, but we're really not sure at this point. Um, there has been a lot of internal speculation about what happened, uh, but without uh, people there being able to report exactly what occurred, we aren't, we aren't sure how the tsunami was generated. Always something to study. Wendy, thank you so much. Yeah. Appreciate your time. You're very welcome. Okay, bye-bye, good luck. Okay, thank you, bye-bye.